Greetings from Berlin. I'm Dave from Bitwig. While we would prefer to be in California weather with everybody else, we are honored to be here in this format. I just want to show you a little bit of Bitwig Studio today, uh, what makes it unique and a truly powerful modern DAW and sound design library. So, Bitwig Studio is a DAW that basically has two sequencers. Here in the Arrange view, we are seeing the Linear Timeline Arranger. Uh, and if I switch to the Mix view, we can see the Freestyle Clip Launcher, where things can be triggered in and out of time or just used as containers, etc. Now, what becomes powerful here is that I can have the two of these existing side by side. Because for the launcher, it's only one use of it for a performance type environment. Um, I could also think about sectionally composing, working on an intro or a verse or a chorus or just getting ideas back and forth. So if I look at this one scene as an example, I've got some kind of vocal texture. It's about four bars long. I've got a bass line that's two bars, some hi-hats, two bars, a fuller drum loop, four bars, and then a melody which ah, is 16 bars long. So we see that everything's a different length within this one scene. Uh, now, if I like what I have and I want to move it into the arranger to work into that workflow, what's interesting is suddenly everything looks like it's the same length because it is. Uh, what the program's done is looked and found the longest thing, which was the melody, 16 bars, and then assumed everything else should loop to match that because uh, like any good DJ, you probably don't want to have silences when going from track to track and just having things drop out. So that's one idea about how things can work together in different parts of the program. And in a similar kind of modularity tinged note, I have these clips, I have the launcher clips, the arranger clips, I have the instruments that exist for each track being triggered. Now, if I can also have multiple sessions open at one time. So if I were to grab a track over here, I'm now saying, well, I like the launcher clips, I like the arranger clips, I like the instruments. I might want to take that over to my other session. So even just being able to have multiple sessions open and then the ability to take things back and forth between them can be awfully handy. So let's use this instrument track we just dragged in for an example of note editing. We've got some clips here. Just a few notes being played. If I wanted to edit them uh, in this secondary panel, I can do that. Or I could switch to the edit view where you have more space to just focus on everything contained here. Whether it's the notes and their placement and velocities or a different idea in Bitwig called expressions. Now these other expressions, unlike velocity, which just happens at the beginning of the note, these expressions are essentially automation that exists per note. So it's one thing to say, I want the volume of this individual note as processed or its panning to be controlled over time and not affect any other notes that are playing. Uh, a more clear example of this is the idea of micro pitch expressions. So now that I've got lines here on the bar, what I could do is say, let's go ahead and have this note actually move over time and not in a pitch bend way, not to affect the entire channel. And maybe this note can go up in its own path, so. So just that idea that each note is individually controllable uh, works well in Bitwig's engine. So just like note clips contain note events, in Bitwig audio clips, which are good for arranging, can also contain audio events, which are a more useful way of editing. Let's look at the big view again. So if we were to trigger this clip, I could grab the contents inside of it and say, well, I wanna slice it up 
into individual pieces to make editing easier. Do I want to slice at onsets, which are the detected positions, or beat markers, which I might have moved around? Let's just do the automatic thing. Slice these drums at onsets. And already things are cut up in a pretty handy way. So we could do a couple normal tricks, maybe duck that out, maybe stretch another piece. Okay, that's a little extreme. Now, if we were to take a different section of the audio, let's grab these events over here and look under the event menu. It knows what we selected. These are the options that we have available. For example, we've got reverse and reverse pattern. So if I choose reverse, then with audio, this should be a pretty familiar concept. Got pretty backwards pretty quick. Now reverse pattern instead, on the other hand, is just a different idea saying, let's reorder these, but not switch the direction that the audio is playing inside of it which can be just a nice, interesting way to try something different, to re-explore what you're used to editing in a different way. And for one last example, if I were to grab this audio event towards the end over here, so in the event menu, here's an option for scale 50% to shrink the event down. Now the push pin icon here is engaged, which means maybe this is something I use a lot and I just wanna keep it around, or if you're on an OS supporting touch, then uh, this is also a handy way to access functions quickly instead of going through menus. So I've got it selected, this region. I'm gonna go ahead and say, shorten it. Command D, duplicate, duplicate, shorten it. Mm, 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 mm. And that just becomes a very quick and easy way to do some edits and cut things up. So we looked at note editing, we looked at audio editing. Now let's see an idea that fuses the two within Bitwig. In Bitwig, there's a concept called hybrid tracks, which is just the idea that really notes and audio don't need to be all that different. So we've got a hi-hat track here. If we trigger it for a minute, we see different cells of the drum machine playing different samples, going through a delay unit. Now, if I needed to change this to audio, either to make a certain kind of edit or whatever else, I don't necessarily have to get rid of all of my notes. If I go ahead and drag this clip and I look in the bottom of the window, I can see all the available functions. And if I hold control, it says bounce. And indeed, look at that, I'm watching it bounce. And when I let go, now I have this so-called hybrid track where it contains both notes and audio. So let's take a look at the signal flow for one minute just to make sense of this. If I hit play in the notes section, you see the note signal is going into the instrument, triggering the instrument as you'd expect, in this case using pitch to select which drum element, and then outputting audio to any audio processing that follows. And when we get to the audio section, now the audio is entering the instrument itself and essentially just bypassing, going straight through, and then reaching the same audio processing chain we've got here at the end. So this could be particularly handy because I don't care which is which. I need notes for certain purposes, I need audio for others, and if I still want to affect the sound downstream, I don't care what the source is, I want all of them to be affected in the same way. And while we're here talking about devices and what's made possible, uh, there is also a feedback chain on this delay uh, with a similar idea in our reverb that says maybe I want to insert a device inside of the feedback of this delay itself, which is the most interesting place to put things. Little frequency shifting. Maybe each stereo side should go differently. And this isn't limited to Bitwig's instruments. If I wanted to load a third-party plugin and make that part of the feedback chain, I could do that just as well. So there we go. 
just a different idea inside of Bitwig for what it makes possible signal flow wise, what it makes possible editing wise, and an overall modular structure of the whole program. Speaking of modularity, I've got a different session loaded here, and maybe we'll go handheld for a moment to see this PreSonus fader port that is on the desk. Now, Bitwig offers controller extensions so that you can take enough of the functions of the program to make a native integration with whatever type of hardware it is. So in this case, a mixer mode might make a lot of sense. I'll go ahead and hit play. So aside from volume automation, we've got colors of tracks as well as you can see them, including labels and names, which can be quite handy and interesting. Perhaps I want to add some touch automation and move the piano up a little higher here. Bring it back down. So if I let go in the nature of touch, the next time we make it around, there we are. Doing it again. Uh, as well as mute and solo. And everything else that you might want from a mixer control. Now, it goes a little bit deeper than that because maybe I want access to my markers, which we can see in our session are up there. So once I hold this, ah, now I've got all of my markers listed just as they are in the program so that I can click, forgive the handheld nature of this, and going all the way back uh, to the beginning, maybe I wanna focus on one instrument here in particular. And instead of a mixer mode, I wanna focus in on the device and see the ways that the automation is there for this particular instrument and how I might wanna control it. For instance, ah, I've got a control called Lavender. Well, that's probably gonna give me something. It, oh. And again, having everything labeled and available is just a very direct interface. Now, this is a pretty nice way for handling a mixing board interface, but if you imagine for a minute, maybe you have a launch pad style controller or something like that. So instead of a mixer interface along uh, with a device control. In that case, if you've got a lot of buttons, maybe you've got a drum programming mode. Maybe you have a step sequence editing type mode. Maybe you've got clip triggering. Uh, everything can conform to the device that you've got because so much of the program is open and available and scripts are already written for most of it. So switching back to the session that we had here, uh, maybe I'll go ahead and add a new device. I'm going to throw in an organ because something else that's pretty interesting about Bitwig is the ability to have a whole lot of modulators as in ways to control any aspect of the program. I'm simplify the organ sound to begin with. And cut out the high harmonics. So where's the envelope? Where's the LFO? You're going to ask that in many of Bitwig synthesizers. Only what's necessary for sound is there because on any of these devices, including third-party plugins, there is a slot for modulators. And in this case, maybe I do want an envelope and maybe I want to make a percussive type effect like you would get on an organ. So that with each note I play, the range, maybe bring the sustain all the way down, of that one draw bar can be sent up and down. Another idea, maybe I grab something simple like a beat LFO, one that's made to synchronize to the tempo of the session. Now, uh, let's look at what I did a moment ago, I actually clicked on this little assignment button and suddenly 
All the parameters of the instrument, or practically all of them, lit up, showing me what is available to modulate. So maybe... Let's go up an octave. Maybe I would like that draw bar to go up with each note played, and maybe I'd like another draw bar to go down. Now, this can get pretty interesting pretty quickly. This doesn't particularly sound like an organ anymore to me because it's an interesting starting point that can then be adapted with the use of these modulators. Um, for another instance, let's add an effect afterwards. So now I've got a little comb filter. Wouldn't it be nice to have the LFO affect the comb filter? Ah, well, I'm in assignment mode and it doesn't work. Until I grab the comb filter, drop it into the included effects chain, and now it is technically woo, part of this instrument. Now that's a bit of a seasick way to approach it. Maybe instead we just want to chip up the feedback with each note. That's a bit subtle. And again, uh, as with anything that involves devices in Bitwig, third-party plugins could live next to these. Any VST is available for modulation as well. So let's take a sound design example for a moment. If I go ahead and grab an audio file off my hard drive and just drop it in where a track would normally go, it had the presence of mind to load this into a sampler. So without even thinking, I'm just gonna start grabbing and oh, that looks like sample start, that looks like sample end. Okay, so I've got some female vocals here. Let's go ahead now and just work with it for a minute and get an idea of what makes Bitwig unique in a sound design environment. Looping might be handy. I've got a couple different modes. Let's turn one on. Ah, and now these green flags. Okay, color coding, it seems to mean something. The yellow is showing me the start and end. The green is showing me loop start and end. And if I drag this around and maybe zoom in, we seem to be seeing individual playheads. If I want to view this bigger. Well, that's kind of fun already. I like a little bit of quieter, silency, noisiness. Okay, so we've got something here. Now, the sampler goes a lot further than this in terms of what it makes available. We've started in this repitch mode, which is really just traditional sample tape machine style playback. Higher notes, higher pitch, lower notes, lower pitch. Um, there are a couple digital modes as well. So if I go to textures, I've got a granular type of playback. <laughs> For more stretching the grains and the size of grains and how much they move between each other. So that's a little bit more of a sound effect uh, mode. Now here's an idea, cycles, which is interpreting it so that each individual cycle of the audio is getting close to being a wavetable. Now this isn't quite wavetable, uh, that's somewhere else in the program, but it's a unique idea. speed and everything becomes independent and pitch can... Now why does it sound funny? Well, if I zoom in, we're not quite lining up with the cycles very well, because we never set a root pitch in the first place. So if I right-click here and say, well, let's detect a root key, because I already set 
a loop region, and that should get us more or less in the ballpark. That looks pretty good, like the cycles are being detected in the right places. Now that's a different kind of sound. I haven't even turned on the filter, but maybe I won't. Maybe I'll grab this formant knob instead. Interesting. So this is a lot of how Bitwig approaches sound design. Let's take something you're familiar with, in this case, any audio on your hard drive, and then mine it and explore what's in there to create something new. This isn't how I would start trying to make this synth sound, but it's interesting to explore it this way. And again, let's go somewhere totally different, a freeze icon. And now the playhead is totally stuck because it is now my responsibility to take the playhead position Let's go ahead and say I want to map it to a controller. I've got a knob here. That's not bad, that's kind of fun. But on top of it, remember, we have this whole bucket of modulators. So maybe a step sequencer would be appropriate here. Let's throw some randomness into the equation. Let's leave the position somewhere in the center. And then ask it to move around. Again, this probably isn't how I would try to start creating a synth sound like this, but it is an interesting place to try it. So with the range of three dozen modulators that are available, there's a lot of opportunities and a lot of places that things could go. So we can take one more look at something slightly different. Let's go back to some of this audio that we had before. Maybe just leave some drums, leave it looping. <laughs> There's our edits. So in Bitwig, we're known for sound design. We're known for modularity. If you want to take those in interesting places, then you have the grid, which is a fully modular sound design environment. In this case, I've loaded effects grid, which is intended for making audio effects. I could load polygrid for instruments and the rest. But let's just hide the device panel to live in the grid for a moment. Uh, now, without a lot of introduction, we can just try some things out. Maybe we want to see what we're doing. That would be handy. I'm gonna drop in a little spectrum so that we have a spectroscope be able to see what's happening. That's not a bad place to start. And now from there, maybe there's a processor we'd like to try out. Well, let's go to the shaper category real quick and say, well, we could do something as simple as a distortion. Now, again, interface and workflow is what gives you a focus on sound design and quick results. If I drag this in here, I could put it in and drag a chord like I did with the Spectrum, but I'm still holding the mouse, so why don't I just drop it on this port? And the program will say, oh, well, it seems like you already had this connected somewhere. Perhaps we should just preserve all of that. And we can see the original versus the distortion. Now let's just wire something up on our own. We've already got this going. So let's go to the delay category and this looks like the biggest interesting one. So we might as well drop it in. Let's give it a different color. Feed it the signal. 
can see it. This is some kind of modulated delay, it looks like. Let's just listen to it for a second. Oh, we seem to have a feedback knob. Now, if I don't know what any of this is, as, as well as with all of our devices, the modules in the grid have a show help option so that we can take a look and get a description of every parameter even when they change. Ah. This seems to have some feedback. Now, let's take this in a different direction and try to find what might be interesting. We've got two different methods of processing this. Maybe there's no one right answer. So if I go into the mix category, okay, maybe what I want to do is take, we could do left, right, but we could also think and say, okay, let's put this delayed version onto the sides. Let's just go straight to MS. the distortion just straight in the middle. So it is a modular environment, but it's pretty straightforward. No matter if you want to interface with an external analog modular system with CV and all the rest, or you want to route in audio as sidechain from different tracks in the session, there's a lot that we could do. So it's worth mentioning, maybe if I don't want to create something on my own, well, I could always browse presets and see what exists in the system already that comes with what's there. Now that's one way to approach it, but I'll mention if I want something simpler in the audio effects category, I do have some container devices that are interesting. If mid side is really my thing, I could throw this in here. I could just go in and say, what do I want in the middle? And now work with standard devices. Let's just use Bivix compressor, slightly tighter ratio for the mid. And then for the side, Again, maybe a plugin would be interesting. So we can throw in Sound Toys Crystallizer. A little more. A little less. So, again, just the idea that with Bitwig Studio, all of your pieces will work together more interesting workflow for notes and audio to get different results, uh, different signal flow opportunities that are available, uh, complete customization if you'd like it, or just new options with your plugins and everything you've got already. It's a full-featured DAW. We hope you'll try it out today. Thank you for this time. Have a good one.